Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome to Celebrating Act 2, where today John Coleman and I have the great pleasure of speaking with John Mariani, the virtual gourmet. That's all. Not only not only the virtual gourmet, but a, an author of what, over 12 books, as I, I recall? And mm -hmm. the king of all media, he is a radio <laughs> talk show host. Uh, and you know, John, what I love about your show, um, because it originally started out as a, because it's a local radio station, right? WVOX is in New Rochelle, I think. Yeah. Um, but despite the fact that it's a local radio station, it's on the internet. So I can listen to it on the West Coast. Mm -hmm. Anybody can listen to it anywhere. And I just love the idea that you were doing a show about growing up in the Bronx based on your book, Almost Golden. And uh, I thought that was terrific. Here I am from the Bronx and I could listen from California. And you got, I thought it was great, but it's changed. All things must change. Tell even, me about this change. Bronx, even the Bronx is not inexhaustible. Um, but, uh, that was the original idea because uh, WVOX, I should say, has been around for oh, a long, long time, 70, 80 years, at a time when there were local radio stations everywhere in the land. And the O'Shaughnessy uh, family who ran it for probably 40, 50 years were very dedicated to, um, because it's a small transmitter, um, to Westchester and Westchester County here in New York and the Bronx, New York. So, so it had a very small audience for many, many years, but uh, the local pizzerias and dry cleaners would all advertise. So I knew Bill for a long while, and I said, you know, Bill, uh, you got some really nice shows on there, Hello Albany and Goodnight Queens and, uh, you know, nostalgia shows and so forth. Uh, a lot of, a lot of uh, Westchester politicians coming on to talk about taxes. And I said, it's good stuff. Um, but I said, why don't we expand a little bit I said, remember, remember Garrison Kaler <clears throat> and the um, Prairie Home Companion, in which for years and years he would talk about growing up in this fictitious community of Lake Wobegon. He'd always begin, it's been a quiet week in Lake Wobegon, where it is. <laughs> and uh, he went on for years that way um, with fictitious characters. Um, and But he also added it to a show called The Prairie Home Companion, whereby he had Oh, string bands and jokesters and jugglers. It was a variety show and it eventually went on to television, but it sort of NPR. So I said, why don't we do an NPR kind of show like that? And I'd like, I'll talk about my experiences growing up in the Bronx and Westchester. And he said, when do you want to start? I said, oh, so I'll give you a good slot, 11 a.m. on Wednesday mornings. So I said, great, uh, for an hour. And I said, sure, I can do that. I can talk for an hour about growing up in the Bronx and Westchester. I'll get my friend John Coleman, who grew up in the Bronx and Westchester. <laughs> he could talk for hours himself. He could be a repeat customer. So that was the original idea. So we go on the air with the title Almost Golden, which, as you said, is based on a memoir my brother and I uh, wrote about growing up in the 50s. <clears throat> and for the first few shows, um, I only glancingly said, yeah, I'm going to be talking about growing up, um, but I'm always going, oh, going to put in context something more interesting. <clears throat> so on the second show, I had an author who was an authority on Stanley Kubrick, who grew up in the Bronx and went to Clinton High School. Wow, okay, so Stanley Kubrick. So then next week was, was Terence Winch, who was the Irish Poet Laureate of, uh, of America. He kind of works with the uh, National Geographic down in Washington, and a great friend of mine went to college, and he talked about growing up in the Bronx uh, as an Irish kid. So we went on like that, and I had a woman whose husband had died in 9-11, has been le leading a fight uh, ever since um, uh, for the rights of, of the woman from, from the, of the people of 9-11. Um, so then I got a little bit beyond that. Oh, did Allan Poe, hey, he lived in the Bronx. I had an authority on that. I had my old high school teacher, Hugo Topo, who is our, our wonderful Hugo, who could go on. Um, with Hugo, you just turn on the on the button and uh, you go out for brunch. Well, and just let Hugo talk. So um, 
it was going along just fine. And I said, you know, I had Big Apple gangsters on. I had a guy talking about Toscanini, the great, uh, the great conductor who lived in Riverdale. I said, as long as there's this little tiny um, connection, uh, this makes sense. Well, after a while, I threw all those little tiny connections to the winds and uh, just uh, as the Tonight Show has never been called the Johnny Carson show or the Jay Leno show. It's always been called the Tonight Show. So it continues to be called Almost Golden. But since then, um, I couldn't be prouder of the guests I've had on. Um, but the fact that now, instead of a ditzy little local station, WVOX, uh, what is that? Victor Oscar Xylophone, WVOX.com, anybody can listen to the show. Anywhere in the world on Wednesdays at 11 o'clock New York time or by late afternoon, the show and all my shows are archived. So you're, if you're interested in the one on Edgar Allan Poe, you go go back and get that and listen all you wanted about Edgar Allan Poe. Um, we had Susan Rubin on Brown versus Bo Board of Education, uh, Jeffrey uh, Sussman on uh, New York Boxers, um, Larry Tyre on uh, Joe McCarthy. Um, we had, and then I said, eh, you know, this is my show. I can get as abstr abstruse as I want. So I had a professor from Yale talking about uh, Jacques Derrida, whose literary theories I hate. So I wanted to blast them out of the water. We had Chaz Palminteri on, who was a Bronx kid who wrote a Bronx tale. We had mm -hmm. Ali McGraw on, who grew up in Bedford in Westchester. Um, so it's, it's just been uh, a great, it's been like a learning experience for me. Uh, my theme song, not for the show, my own personal theme song is I know a little bit about a lot of things, but I don't know enough about you. So just this past week, um, there's this New Yorker writer named Alec Wilkinson who wrote a book <clears throat> called uh, uh, Divine, uh, Divine Learning, Math, uh, Geometry and Calculus at the Edge of Old Age. And he, just like me, flunked. Uh, trigonometry in high school and never gave it a second thought because I'm never gonna ever gonna need sine cosine tan and radicals and so forth never gonna build a, a, a bridge across the Hudson so you snip that out of your synapses and let it go but over the years yeah <laughs> was it me was I so good at some of these other things just why was it? Why couldn't I grasp math? And it's you start to hear things like math is very, very beautiful. Math is never wrong. Math is its own thing. So I had the uh, uh, Alec on, and um, uh, he, he was just wonderful because he dug in. He bought a copy of uh, Dummies uh, Algebra for Dummies, and he started with that. And got into, and it took an entire year. He became obsessive about it. So I don't want to go on about that, but it's just a fascinating show, which shows that anything I'm interested in is going to be on this show, which is why I never, ever have politicians on. Um, I, 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 I have enough sleepless night wondering about uh, the politics of this country to uh, do more of that sort of thing. Yeah. So, uh, John, um, this is on every Wednesday morning. Do uh, offhand note, I'll put a, a, a notice in the <clears throat> description, but do you know offhand uh, what people should look for uh, on the internet so that they can find your, or is there a link on your website? Well, there is on my website, johnmariani.com, but there's wvox.com. Uh, and there's a button there to watch it live any hour of the day or to go to the uh, archive of my shows, uh, Almost Golden, which has its own embedded um, uh, site within the site and uh, so you can because a lot of people a lot of times they pre-record if they can't come on on Wednesday at 11 <clears throat> and then the show goes on and I send them the link so yeah I mean it's uh, and I invite people to look through the list because uh, you know if, if you like an interview with Ali McGraw she's very very open very very honest reveals that in fact you know you say um, goodbye, Columbus. So I said, "Well, oh, you play a nice Jewish girl, Ali McGraw." Says, "Yeah, I'm half Jewish, you know." Um, and Chaz Palminteri. Oh, we had um, we had Dion of Dion of the Belmonts on. Belmonts on. Dion DeMucci. 
Dion DiMucci. Did Runner Ron Sue show up as well or uh, from, from mm -hmm. the Belmont? My, yeah. my, my wife was a huge fan, was a groupie back in the day, and she and her mom, when she was just a, a wee teenager, uh, uh, used to follow them all over the place. So, uh, And uh, he used to ride around in the Bronx in a convertible with the the radio up, but uh, it was, and, and he's still performing today. I I saw him on a, a some interview someplace. He sounded actually really good. He came out just three or four months ago with well, I think it's his best album. It's an all blues album mm -hmm. with greatest uh, blues guitarists on the planet, but uh, both guitarists and and pianists and pianists uh, to like Marsha Be Marsha Ball with a great ragtime New Orleans uh, jazz pianist. And it's a terrific album. Just terrific. Do you have any special people coming up that you want to tease us about? Yeah, I have next week a uh, biographer of Ernest Hemingway, who is my favorite writer. I have a show coming up. It'll be a two or three part show on the most beautiful, not the most famous, but the most beautiful songs ever recorded by female uh, vocal artists going back to the Going back to uh, Ella Fitzgerald and uh, going up to Burt Bacharach, who's not a female vocal artist, but Dionne Warwick is. So those are the couple, a couple of them. Um, of them, I have a show coming up. With a guy who wrote a book on Casablanca, everybody's favorite movie. So uh, yes, yeah, stay tuned. It's it's going to be great. Well, we're in good uh, we're in good hands because you do have a very eclectic uh, taste and knowledge base. So, so John, this that's why this show that we we are doing now, Art and and, and yourself, is uh, is so important. It, and I think in some ways, when you mentioned this years ago, perhaps it goaded me into thinking, hey, what the heck? You know, I'm just turned seventy seven years old. Um, I'm writing books, which may or may not get published. So I got to fill the time somewhere. Why don't I go out and get a radio show? <laughs> why not? There is a second act uh, to be had. Right. Well, we're glad you did. Right. And glad it's a, ter a terrific show. And we encourage all of our audience to go uh, to johnmariani.com uh, or vox.com uh, or whatever, whatever you find at any place and uh, take a listen, uh, especially if you're from the Northeast, you'll have a good time. And anyway, it's just nice to listen to. Well, it, it's once upon a time, as I said, there were dozens and dozens of radio stations on various topics as well as music and so forth and they've vanished into serious or into right wing and left wing uh, mm -hmm. political programs. so i mean that's all you've got out there is to hear the rush limbaugh's of the world rant and rave but there isn't outside of npr there isn't anything like my show that i know of where's Art Linklater when we need him <laughs> All right, next time we see you, we're going back to talk about food and travel. Yes. But in the meantime, we'll be listening to your radio show. Thank you, John. Thank you. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.